This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Rebecca, welcome to Five Questions. Thank you so much for having me. What originally inspired you to pursue your career in content and all of your creative pursuits? Well, I moved down to Los Angeles to be an actor, and I quickly realized that acting for me was not fulfilling in the sense that I was so interested in all the other aspects, uh, the camera, the this, the that. And I I started loving producing. I, I found out I loved creating more so than just acting. So I started producing a lot of my content. And um, after my wedding, I found out I had to have my colon removed and I had to wear an ostomy bag. And during those surgeries, I needed some place where I would be able to have flexibility of filming at home. And so that's why I started YouTube because I could film from the waist up. And then while doing that and growing my YouTube channel, I was able to produce and create content for other people. Yeah. And because you're a creator outside of the kind of normal Hollywood gamut, you're able to have control over what you do, when you do it, how you do it. For the most part, obviously, the sponsors, there's other variables in play. But uh, yeah, that, that degree of kind of flexibility. I mean, I've been I've been in the creator space since 2006. So I feel like a kind of an old man in that respect. Uh, but yeah, and you there's so many different topics that people focus on, but you've really found your own niche with it, which I think is very, very cool. How did you choose to focus on publishing DIY, dancing, and gymnastic videos on social media? And how did you turn that into a business? Well, when I started my YouTube channel, I was producing content for other people because obviously YouTube wasn't my full-time job. Um, but just like you, I'd been creating for years before this all happened. Just even like videos, I would learn to edit. I would, I, I learned all of it. Uh, but I found Musical.ly at the time, which is now TikTok, was a platform where you could really grow and it had a young audience. And at the time on YouTube, it was a lot harder to come in because there were established players in the game and it was it was just a different time. And so I saw Musical.ly as an opportunity to bring in a new audience. And so I created t- content there and I moved people over to my YouTube channel. And that's, that's how it, how it went. And I realized soon after that, my audience was starting to get younger. And with that, I realized that I had a responsibility. And so my content geared towards the people watching it, because um, as someone older, I just, I wanted to make sure that I was like, setting a good example for the audience that I was building. And as far as gymnastics and DIY, all of that stuff goes, those are all things that I love to do. I was a gymnast for over 10 years. I was a level 10 elite gymnast. I coached for many years. Uh, The DIYs, those were actually all fails. And that was just, I would try to do things and it didn't work out well. And that's essentially how I built my brand. It it turned into a thing where they watched because I failed. Um, I'm still not good at DIYs, but really it was me creating content that I enjoyed and then also being aware of the audience that was watching the content. And something that's kind of more unique to your situation versus maybe other creators is this is like a family business, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. It's... uh it's my husband and I, and then we have our daughter, Zadie. And actually, Matt's parents both run our merchandise. So all of our uh, merchandise comes from them. Um, I found that uh, it can be good, hard and great to work with family. But when you find the right people, um, for example, our merchandise, we had another company do it and the quality wasn't there. And and I want my what I sell or the the products that they get that is Rebecca Zamolo, Zam Fam. I want that to have the same feeling. I, I want them to feel a certain way. And Matt's mother, my mother-in-law was really able to capture that because she truly cares about kids and the younger generation. And she, she's just a very caring person. And I want people to feel that when they receive something from us. So, so in that sense, it was, it was really great. And then it was just a 
a natural flow. My husband was actually in the hotel business when I was going full time on YouTube in 2017 and I needed help. And he was so much faster at editing. Like I was like, please like come. And he was very nervous to quit, you know, his full-time job. But, you know, after three months, we had a friend who kind of transitioned him where he got to work four days with him while he was working on my stuff. But within three months, it had become such a a full-time, there was enough work where we were able to just focus on YouTube. Is it difficult to balance the needs of your family with that of your content creation business? Yeah, you know, for me, there aren't a a, a lot of, other moms on YouTube that are creating the amount of content that I'm creating at at the level I am. So in the sense, I feel like I am a pioneer. A lot of moms go into just mom vlogging and, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, still create the level of content I did before having my daughter. Now with that is has its own challenges that maybe a lot of guys can't see or don't have, um, But I am able to look outside of YouTube because even though there aren't a lot of women in YouTube doing this and creating this amount, I look at musicians and touring artists that are able to bring their kids. And I'm able to look at other entrepreneurs like Jessica Alba, people that have built companies. And so it's not the same, but it is the same. And I look, I'm always studying what they do, how they do it. And, you know, we're lucky enough where we can film at home. And so my daughter is very close by. So it's like, we're filming. And then in between breaks, I'm back to being a mom, you know, and then I'm back to filming. And um, it's it's a constant. It's a juggling act and you're constantly it's adjusting. Constantly, you know, okay. and, and she's got a lot of people around her that we trust that have been there since she was born. So I, I'm, I'm lucky in that sense. I have a very strong support system. And what lessons have you learned over the course of your career that have helped you stay relevant and grow your audience because you're already so big in terms of audience size. But I think that where a lot of creators struggle is, you know, can you keep this going for five more years? Like, how do you constantly reinvent? It's a, is it new platforms? Is it new ways in which you are, you know, being creative in terms of content or distribution? I think for me, uh, this platform really caters to my personality. I get bored doing the same thing every day. There's certain things like I can eat the same thing every day, but as far as creativity, I eat the same thing every day. (laughs) I I eat the same thing and that's fine. That's fine. But creatively, I, I wouldn't feel fulfilled if I was doing the same thing every single day and I wasn't challenging myself and with platforms like this and algorithms, um, you're constantly being challenged. You're constantly having to learn. You're constantly having to pivot And so just knowing that and knowing that you can never be locked into any one thing and knowing that what works now will not work six months from now. And just being like comfortable, always being uncomfortable, you know, like if you are too comfortable, chances are um, it's going to go down soon, you know? So it's like, you're constantly, as soon as you get to that place where you're like, I think I've got it it's going to, it's going to change. And just understanding that and and looking in a bigger sense, zooming out when that happens versus always focusing on um, just the day to day. I think when you have a mission or a goal for me, I'm really passionate about building up the self-esteem of this next generation, empowering them, making it more, um, about that and and my content, you know, I I'm very thoughtful uh, when I'm posting things of like how that's going to be perceived by a younger generation, a younger female or male, and like um, I think if you keep your audience at the forefront and like what are you trying to do for them, I think it 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 keeps it um, it, it keeps it easier to stay relevant because you're focusing on the consumer, the the people watching. Exactly. Yeah. It's like business one-on-one. You figure out the, what the consumer wants and you do, you know, you deliver what they want in terms of your content and how you portray it in a way that's also authentic to you, which is what you're getting at as well. And what's your best piece of career advice? My best piece of career advice is to be okay with working hard 
I think um, everyone and, and having a bigger purpose than, you know, money, fame, it, it's not enough. And always trying to kind of keep that as your, your, your vision, your overall. And if you can do that and you have a purpose, it, it makes it much easier because it does get hard. And, you know, there are, it, it goes up and down, but if you have a mission and you have a focus and you feel like you are passionate about that, um, I think, I think that's the one thing that can keep you going because it isn't always easy and you have to really love it. And I don't think you can love something unless it's something that, um, is very like true to, to what you want to do in your passion. Yeah. What you're really saying is you need the long-term vision, right? So you got to think about what's the bigger picture. Where's this all going? What am I trying to serve and who am I trying to serve? Like you've obviously yeah. know who those people are. And then it's also the short term. What are we doing today, tomorrow, the next day to be able to constantly kind of, you know, not only stay relevant, but stay in tune with the audience. So it's, it's really mixing both is what you're saying, which I think is really yeah. smart. Yeah. There's I, yeah, I think my advice is constantly changing, but just knowing that it, it will be, it will be hard, but if you love what you do, it will be worth it. Is important. Well, that's, well, that's great advice. And thank you so much for being on yeah. the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs>